episode 72, man. What up, uh, God dang on Figuring Shit Out podcast. I know what time it is, man. Uh, it's your boy, King Goth in the building. Don't y'all forget, I got to remind y'all before we get started. Unify and thrive. You know what I mean? That's what we always about. Uh, my man Frank over there, what's up with you? What's going on, man? You know what it is. Bunny Flocks. Check out the site, cyberbunny.com. It's a, it's a cybersecurity website. And then Lucid Perspective is media, websites, video, photography, graphic design. Outside of that, it's the same old, same old. What's going on with you, bro? Hey, Frank got the boss man cigar today, man. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a new thing, bro. Uh, I've been, it's been crazy. And a wife smoking them too uh, now, so. <laughs> fire. <laughs> you say your wife smoking too. That's fire. <laughs> she got me started. So, yeah, oh. we, got, uh, we got the, we got the Jade of All Spade. I, I messed it up. The Jade of All Trades in the house. <laughs> she's an artist, uh, Jay Josephine. Man, how you feeling today, Jay? I can't complain. I feel good. I feel good. I've been busy working, so that's always a blessing. No, nope, no. Nope. Always, so- yeah. Uh, me and Jay go way back, way back a long time, like for maybe fresh out of high school days. Like, yeah, high school. She always been, yeah, yeah, yeah. She always been an artist. Like, she was on her music stuff consistently back then, like, I got some new music. I'm always got some new music. I'm always in the music scene. I'm always doing something. But I ain't mm-hmm. never not known her to be doing music. Right. That's so uh, that's what I that's what I really like about Jay. So uh no, that's dope. To get the show started, to get the show started, we always ask everybody, man, what was your figuring shit album? Like I, the, my figuring shit album just like in life. Well, to be honest yeah. with you, I had a couple of fi- major figuring shit out moments. Um, as far as the music goes, that was kind of quick. Because mm. I was surrounded about like by music, so my my brother did music, my my cousin, his friends, and they're like they're t- like ten years older than me, mm. and so they were majorly rapping uh. around the Wu Tang Mob Deep type era, you know what I'm saying? So okay, um, I was introduced to it rather quick, so I I realized I wanted to rap, and my brother like kind of held my hand through it. He was like, "I'm gonna teach you how to count bars." So the first thing Whoa. is bars and I and then after that I wrote my my first rap really like he didn't have to do too much after that and I I spit it for him he 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 thought it was amazing it was garbage but he thought it was amazing <laughs> I kept going <laughs> you know what I'm saying I kept going and um and then my cousin um when I was around like 15 years old when he knew that I was into rapping and I started looping beats to make my own beats because Nobody sat there and taught me how to make beats or or even how to, you know, get an instrumental. Like it was really hard back then, especially if you wanted the dopest instrumentals. Mm-hmm. So I, I had to, I was looping it, you know what I'm saying? And so he was like, I got you. So he taught me how to really make beats um, on a, like a Kai, you know, like the orange boxy joint, like the, you know what I mean? The old school one that looked like a Nintendo. My, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> right. you know I mean, he taught me on that. And then, so that was my figuring shit out like oh I love it and I actually might be good at it you know what I'm right. saying and that was a, a turning point for me a very big one and as far as uh like how it progressed it, it was just really interesting because like my mom was I, w- I was a psych major so I, you know I still was just rapping and you know recording myself but then um, when, when I was in, uh, at Old Dominion University, my mom was like, what are you doing? You really want to, you know, be a psych major? Like, what do you really want to do? Right. You should do something with music. And so I switched my major. They didn't even have nothing at ODU at the time, um, for me. And then I realized, okay, boom, I'm going to start recording myself at home. She bought me my first mic. She bought me Pro Tools. Yo, and- that's dope. And that was like the first steps of me really figuring that shit out. And like, right. okay, <laughs> this is great. Like, okay, I got to do it on my own. My mom, my mama always was a hustler. So she kind of instilled into me, like, how do we do this and cut out the middleman? She's always trying to cut out the middleman. Right. The studio, and, yeah, yeah. And the studio was the middleman. So she was like, and ain't boom. expensive. <laughs> right. And um, yeah. God rest her soul, she passed. And right, at, right so, yeah. after she passed, like a month after that, I went to school um, for engineering. You know what I'm saying? In production. And it changed everything. Where at OD, OD, you had a program? For no, 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 no. I had to leave. So I went to record and workshop uh, there in Chillicothe, Ohio. They're mm-hmm. the ones that actually, uh, you know, you heard of uh, Full Cell. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the people that started Full Sail went to recording workshop. You know what I'm saying? Wow, so okay. Yeah, and so I was like, all right, I'm going to just go to the source because I'm going to cut out the middleman. Right. And it, so it was cheaper. You know what I'm saying? It was quicker. And they and they were, and they taught well, like? Absolutely efficient. And you know right. what I'm saying? Like one of my professors, uh, he, at the time, he had just quit Bad Boy. He was an engineer there. And then now my old professor that he's now the drum programmer for Beyonce. That's right dope. now, Derek Dixie, you know what I'm saying? So I really learned from the best. So that's ill. You know what I mean? After she passed, it was like, I'm going to go full force with it. Like, that's it. For her. So right. we got to talk time frame because, like, 10, 10 plus, uh, I put it this way, two lifetimes ago, I was, I'm still big into <laughs> music. I, I used to be in, in the scene, the local scene here. Take you talking about your journey kind of remind me of where I was like 10, 15 years ago, learning the the software, learning the DAWs, mm -hmm. getting my feet wet with all that. How would you say how long did it take before I guess you first started learning to like you got that first royalty check or that first pay stub? Man, you know it was a minute because like I, I started my ASCAP when I was 19 because I was like, all right, I need to know the business of it. So I started my ASCAP when I was 19. I didn't probably even see like a check forever because even when I went to school, I was just recording people. You know what I'm saying? That's how I was getting my real money. You know what I'm saying? I was putting stuff out, but I wasn't like my streams weren't adding up to mm -hmm. any type of royalty check that ASCAP was going to release funds for. You feel me? Right. It, it had the threshold. It was for... like 96 cents. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And then what happened was... um throughout my journey i went to jail i got i'm a, I, I, i'm an ex-felon mm. you know i mean my shit is clean now right. but um after i after i got out of jail um the producer that i had at the time he had moved to california and he was like yo take a chance come out here so i was like fuck it i'm gonna come out there like i gotta, what what you gotta lose? Like, yeah. yeah like i'm i was already risking it all you know what i mean i was already risking my freedom so i was like all right bet so I went out there. He had just graduated from L.A. recording school. And his professor at the time was like, hey, you know any female rappers? We uh, we're uh, I work for Position Music. I'm an A&R Position Music. And we need some music for this new TV show called Pussy Valley, because that's what it was called then. You right, know what right. I'm saying? It's called it's yeah. called P Valley now. And I was like, tell him yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and so, so what happened? Is I, I ended up I ended up reading a, the play because it was a play originally. So for each character, I wrote a song. I wrote nine songs, That's and um, I recorded it. Ended up giving it to them within like five days, for real, like five days. They signed it. Real beast mode. Real That's beast dope. mode. And me being silly, I didn't know the late who the label was. So mm -hmm. I didn't know the uh, capacity of who they met in the sync world. You know what I'm saying? Right. So yeah. like, I was just like, cool. They're going to give me uh, five bands in for these songs mm -hmm. just to put it, just to store them in the library. And then I'm going to make some money from yeah. cool. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't even understand yeah. really the business that I'm in now that I'm fully understanding, but that was a, oh, okay, boom. That's, that's that dope. was what I'm saying, but but the thing is, they didn't. P Valley didn't even use none of the songs, none of those songs. They um, Lovecraft Country for HBO ended up picking up the songs from that album. You know what I'm saying? That's super dope. That's super dope. Which actually meant that's more amazing. to me because Raphael Sadiq was the music supervisor, so it was like he picked me. Mm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? In my mind, I'm like, right. I, I made it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, that's it. And then I got my first royalty check. <laughs> okay. No, nah, that's super dope. That's super dope. It's, it's like, Mama, I made it? No, nah, the Mama, I made it moment was Tetris. I got a Tetris placement. And uh, not only did they use the song, okay. it, you know what I'm saying? They used my face on the on the, on, on the background of the game. No, nah, that's it. And that was a Mama, I made Crazy. it moment. <laughs> that was like, oh, okay. But like, the Lovecraft Country was like the first step of 
I mean, that wasn't my very first placement. My very first placement was a Kohler, uh, a bidet for Co- it was called Kohler Queen Bidet. And so mm-hmm. that was my actual first placement. And then I was like, all right, bet I can make some money. Then I got the Lovecraft Country one. And it was like, oh, okay. You know what I'm so, saying? Let me, let me ask right. this, because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there, um, inspiring producers, musicians, right. rappers, artists. And there always seems to be this discussion about how to get put on, like what to do to get hurt. Now, you know, depending who you ask, there's always these, there's people that are exclusive, right? They like, they like to hoard it. I was one of those. I would make something and I wouldn't want to let nobody hear it. I would hoard it for myself, mm-hmm. either right. through fear of, of failure or whatever the case. And then there's the, um, so that's exclusive, right? Like you hold it for yourself. You don't want to show nobody. And then there's this, this other school of thought where they just post it on websites, SoundCloud, Mm-hmm. Um, back in the day, it used to be Reverb Nation. I don't know if it's still around. It's still oh, pop. <laughs> is it okay? Yeah. There's mm-hmm. all these websites, and you just <laughs> throw shit out there. Mm-hmm. It, is there a right or wrong answer to that? Should you hold it for and, and be exclusive with it, and you know, share it to a select few that maybe can take it somewhere, or is it okay to just blast and throw your shit out there? And you know, I I say, I was one of those hoarders, like real talk. For a mm-hmm. long time, I was hoarding music and. It was because I didn't know how to present myself as an artist. I, I knew I could rap well. I knew I could make good music, but I didn't know how to present myself as an yeah. artist because I didn't look like I didn't look like Nicki Minaj. So I was like, I don't know how to present myself. So why mm. even put my music out there? Right. But then I was like, man, who's gonna know that I can do this? What's how am I gonna gain a fan? How you know what I'm saying? So Right. I started releasing um, um, freestyles on SoundCloud, mm-hmm. real heavy, 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 and then those started picking up. Like, like, oh, I got five thousand listens on that. That's crazy. And I was like, okay, so maybe I should really mm-hmm. start putting stuff out. And then I put out my first single by myself on Distro Kid. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then I was like, okay, and actually seeing some money come back. Not a lot, you know. What I mean, it was enough to get a, you know, what I mean, a combo. But it was like, okay, <laughs> it was enough people the stream that streamed it where I could get that because the streams don't amount to anything really. Right. So right. I was like, okay, so I I really need to do that because if you don't establish yourself and sh- let people know that you can make mm-hmm. the music when the time comes, right? Say, say you got Diddy or, well, not Diddy because he got some fire on him right now. But yeah. say you got like, uh, <laughs> say you got like, mm-hmm. Uh, coach, you know what I mean, QC, you know what I'm saying, somebody sitting across from you that you can get music to and you can give him the music and then he go to look you up and you like, he like, where, who are you? Right. What do, right. What do you do? How long have you been doing this? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I think that you should release it so you can establish yourself. Okay, because this, because um, depending on who you ask, some people, like I, I heard uh, Timbaland on a live I don't know if it's a live or or a podcast or whatever. He was talking about how the, the industry now is like so it's, so it's saturated with producers, right? There's so much stuff out there and you don't that you lose value in that because I guess back in his time, you know, it was exclusive and he could sell a beat for like a half a million dollars. Now you just got so much music out there and it's like saturated. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I guess it's a it's a it's a, a balancing that, right? You can no, hold the good producer, stuff for you. Mm-hmm. As a producer, do not do that. Okay, got you. Does that make sense? Because yeah. as a producer, yeah. you're giving the uh the opportunity for other artists to steal. So mm. a- as a producer, what you want to do is find artists that are going to rap on those beats that you like, not that that you're going to get paid for that and that you don't like that that what they're creating with your baby because it's your baby. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, mm. still put that music out, but with someone you like and that you trust also put like a complete a complete composition or project not like beats for sale two dollars three dollars five dollars no No. (laughs) you there's other outlets that you can take as product producers to get Mm -hmm. your music heard and placed because that's the key now because at the end of the day like becoming asap rocky is like winning the lottery right now you know what i'm saying you got you got you got to get a winning ticket So mm-hmm. <clears throat> being realistic, how do I make money with my music? 
placements. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, and as a producer, you got a lot of leeway, and that's why I, I produce as well because now you can get into just straight compositions and doing stuff just for ads and where you don't need vocals. I got paid. 30k off of 15 seconds of production that's ill you know what i'm saying that's so that's fire. you gotta there's other ways that you can monetize that and make it you know what i mean like you don't i i literally get up check my emails for briefs then see what these music supervisors want and need and this is accessible to everybody exclusively i get some from publishers but if you want to see what producers, I mean, um, like TV shows and films, what they need, you can go to mm-hmm. songtrader.com right now mm-hmm. and they'll have a list of briefs of things that people need and start making that music. Start wa- watching TV and listening to the music and being like, have you ever heard something? Be like, I can make a way better song that would have fit for this. Netflix, The Netflix show, like a lot of the, the love shows, they have like um, uppity pop type things in the background i'm like yeah you, you, it don't sound like no, no famous person it's just it's, like yeah it's, and they're getting no, it's, checks it. off that you know <laughs> what i'm saying and then like to I the mean, point where like, like boom i got jersey i got the, the jersey shore placements right but the jersey shore placements they get placed that through an umbrella so what they do is buy you out they'll mm-hmm. buy that buy those songs out so where you can't release them and they're gonna play them of, of course you're still gonna get your money but they're gonna play that i got 36, I'm on like 36 different episodes of Jersey Shore. You type, that's you know dope. what I mean? Yeah, that's dope. <laughs> because, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? So you, there's other ways to monetize. You can literally, uh, music is everywhere. That's so nice. find who needs it. Are you looking for a media agency that covers all the creative tasks that make a business successful? Lucid Perspective produces elegant, high-resolution graphics and logos, high-definition and 4K video, complete with treatment concepts and innovative editing. Lucid Perspective provides photography services such as fashion, advertisements, product or service, and aerial photography. We also help businesses build their brands from the ground up with complete campaigns that will make your business attractive to your target audience. We can bring your brand to the masses with our effective and strategic marketing campaigns to include sales funnels, eye-catching advertisements, breakthrough digital marketing through social media and other digital avenues. Visit lucidperspective.com today. No, that's that's inspiring. That's how inspiring. Like, like, so me personally, I don't mean a hot conversation, uh, Arthur. You you can jump anytime. Go ahead, go ahead. ahead. Um, But no, I was going to say, (laughs) I lost a, um, so what are we, 2024? Like 12, 13 years ago, I lost I ain't gonna say I lost the passion for music, but I lost the drive because I was I was, you know, doing my thing with my people. We was trying. And it just, I don't know if it was just the environment or the lack of um success or just stagnancy, but it was like, bro, I got tired of it. And that was like two lifetimes ago. But every time I talk to a music head and you know, we get vibing, it's like that shit comes back. It's like a it creeps back over like, it. yo, yeah. I wanna bust out the keyboard, <laughs> open up my Pro Tools and and uh what's the other one? ableton and all that and like try again you know what i'm saying it's just it's just crazy how it's just because you, you don't you know passion. yeah right and to the point where i got a song that i did when i was like 19 years old i literally just re re-recorded that song on a new beat and got it into a publishing library you know what i'm saying so they could try to pitch it so right. you just never know mm-hmm. what you're missing out on unless you actually try and then nah, put yourself in those positions, like to the point where I was like, oh, okay, if this is what I want to do, I need to learn from the best of in my field of what I'm doing. So I'm doing TV, I'm doing music for TV, film, and video game. So I was like, all right, I did all the research. Who is the best? Who are who's there getting all the placements? And right. then what are what is their sound? Then mm-hmm. what then I was like, oh. I I could do this. This is nothing. I just started making those sounds because when I first got the deal, I just started pitching them music that I love to make my art. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they was like, nah, you know what I'm saying? They was like, uh, uh, like, like it's good music, but it's not categorically what it's too specific. Mm -hmm. It fits only your narrative. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't know how to write for TV, how to write for these commercials. You know what I'm saying? And then next thing you know, I get a PGA placement because now I know how to write for these commercials right. and how to generalize See, my statements. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like when, you, when you're when writing a resume for a job, you tailor it to that job. Correct. So, and our thing, and I'll be right. honest, we was young and dumb. We was just trying to get rich and famous as most. You're just making years. music. Right. We was trying to get put on, trying to get signed. You know what I'm saying? Trying to blow up, get a single popping and fucking take over the world. And and a lot of people I feel like start with that goal and agenda, but it's there's more to it than that, obviously, right? Understanding right. the business, tailoring and all that stuff. So that's probably what was our downfall. We was just like, we just trying to fucking be famous. But I think that's everybody. <laughs> so, like and but don't but but what I, I try to get tell artists is don't lose that. Mm -hmm. Don't the lose desire. That. That or yeah, don't lose that that feeling of I just want to make the music that I love that makes me feel good because you can get you can start getting placements and then get wrapped up into becoming a literally commercial artist like mm -hmm. where now you are a jingle right. lady like I could be a jingle lady instead of <laughs> are you still making money and you you I'm still making money yeah. but yeah. I don't right. want to be a jingle lady like I don't want to just be a, you know right. what I mean so. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that, that reminded me of Jamie Foxx when he was writing them jingles. Yo, and and when I started doing this, <laughs> I thought of that show for mm -hmm. real. I was like, oh, uh, this is what he was doing. But with luckily, they're using music that sounds more authentic instead of love that chicken from Popeyes <laughs> instead of so specific <laughs> to that. They're utilizing music that that sounds you know familiar to us. One of my mm -hmm. um. One of my homeboys that I rap with, uh, Lucid, he just got on a ESPN, like between basketball games, like uh, like not basketball games, but like right between plays and right before they go to commercial, they're playing whole squad. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so they That's want music that sounds authentic to to us, but also still broad mm -hmm. and that could fit anybody that we could generalize. You know what I mean? No, that's do you no. think that makes you a better artist though like because like you were saying you wanted to make music that you wanted to make and they would come back it's like uh, make music for this do you feel like that made you a better artist yeah because i had to stretch myself i had to um i was like i had to figure out for one i had to figure out how to write the same song a hundred times mm. in a different way and mm. and it's it took me realizing that oh shit i'm writing the same song <laughs> <laughs> again for a different company in a different way over another beat so it it made me become more clever it made me become um uh more intrigued with words and how people vibe off of things and and emotion into music with it you know what i'm saying like what's gonna rev you up if i'm doing sports music what's about to get you pop mm -hmm. you know That's what i'm fair. saying so it did help a lot, actually. Let's talk about, um, I guess, structure of a business-wise, right? Like, let's say you you're an aspiring musician, producer, whatever have you. Built you you build your LLC or you, you, your corporate structure. I guess what would you what was your what is your advice for somebody just trying to get started as far as the corporation structure or the LLC structure, and what is the first step uh, as far as like you you mentioned ASCAP before. There's also yeah, that, B, BMI. After, after you get your business mm -hmm. license, go ahead and get your publishing together. You can go mm -hmm. through ASCAP, BMI, CSAC. Um, the, and CSAC's more of a private company. You have to be referred. Mm -hmm. um, but ASCAP right now, they're free if you're trying to sign up right now and get your writers in your pub. And so that would be the next step because we need to, you need to know how to keep track of your money mm -hmm. at the end of the day. You got to keep track of their paper. So get the publishing together and then start um, finding your resources for networking. Right. Okay. And that's because, a good question. That, that's good. That's next too, because, okay, let's say you got a dope track, dope fire track. Because this is what we struggle hey, Frank, with. Hey, Frank, you think about getting back in the game, Frank? Bro, every time I get on this topic, bro, <laughs> it, I tell you, I'm going to bust out some shit and then I'll fuck around for like a few weeks. But I'm I'm just for people out there that are more serious than me. Like I'm into other things now. Um, it's good to know. I, sure. I get Just inspired like sometimes. I'll, I'll do a video for somebody, a musician or whatever. But from that next step, okay, you sign up with ASCAP, you sign up with BMI. 
you got uh some tracks maybe an ep album whatever what would you do with all the knowledge that you have now and you, you all the way back 10 20 years ago what is the first thing you would do if you were just getting started after you signed up to those um well if it was available to me back then i would mm -hmm. do the, my own distribution so mm -hmm. cd baby distro kid united masters one of the one of those so that i can be i can release it myself you know what i'm saying but then but that's just to keep track of what we're doing here you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying because every song that you release is your resume you know for somebody else to to see and the information on the on the internet is limitless so what it it's like now we have to be more specific with our goals as musicians so as a musician what is my my goal someone's goal might really be i want to be famous mm -hmm. that's not gonna cut it what do you want to do you <laughs> want you know what i'm saying you want to get on a radio so if you want to get on a radio Go ahead and make sure you get your distribution together. Like I said, make sure you have a clean version, instrumental version for those DJs that you can distribute those to. Mm -hmm. Go to your local radio stations. People, the, the DJs will play you if you respect them. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Network, I got yep. I got plays out here forever because I respect my DJs. You know what I'm saying? DJ B held me down for years. Nope. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So. Right. Respect your DJs. You want to get, yeah, if that's what you want to do. That that's certain things you can do to get on the radio. Listen to the radio on those local. Ind they have independent days where they play in all local artists, and that's mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you right. got to do your research. If that, if that's what you want to do, then do that. If you want to get into TV and film like I'm doing, type it in. Hey, how do I get into publishing or music and licensing? And a couple of things will pop up. One of the first things that's going to pop up is taxi. Taxi is a paid service. Don't do it. I uh, I remember them. I think I remember Don't when they it. when they came out. I mean, so, they they benefit a lot of people, but mm -hmm. the first year you're going to spend more money than it is beneficial. So if you're hungry and that's your last, do not do it. But if you got a little money in your pocket, go ahead and do that. Because, because yeah, they had a they had a dope promotion. Uh, yeah. They were talking about making all this money for people, and it it sounded too good to be true. To be honest, no, I don't they, know. They do it. They do it for you. And so okay. if you got some money in your pocket saved, go ahead and do that. But if that's your last, do not do that. You could sign up for Song Trader, and Trader is spelled without an e at the end. It's just the r. dot com, and that's free. They also do distribution, but they'll give you lists of briefs and what people are looking for. And then if you also, like, like I said, if you just Google these things, you'll find email addresses and businesses. So one of the companies that um, I'm signed to, if you go up to one of their websites and go to the contact information at the bottom, you can see how to submit. Mm -hmm. And it's like, do your research. It's, it's really it's it's not even that hard because I got I got I I'm not gonna hold you. My first deal I got on a whim. Like somebody was right. looking for a female rapper, right? But all of the rest was legwork. I right. started doing research. I started following music supervisors and and rappers and producers that were doing the same thing that I'm doing, so I can get in. Sorry, let me cut this off. on. And so I started just networking and trying to figure it out that way. And I literally just started submitting. People started taking my music and then I started getting placements. And when I started getting the placements, other pub publishers just started reaching out. Other producers that had resources for mm -hmm. other publishers started reaching out. That's dope. I feel like I'm in like a, uh, again, the music industry one-on-one right now. And I'm asking all the questions that I needed <laughs> to answer 15 years ago. Cause, cause as you talking, <laughs> I got more questions coming up. It's like I'm glad you said that because I'm speak I'm speaking at Sync Spotlight March 30th in Sandy Springs, Georgia. I wanted to bring that up. Yeah, I'm, I'm speaking there and I'm be talking about the same thing, and I, I'm gonna be you know giving it to you straight about how I really went about it because no, the way that I did it was unorthodox. You know right. how they say you gotta kind of kick some doors and you kind of gotta kick you gotta ruffle a little feather sometimes. Mm -hmm. You gotta make yourself make yourself <laughs> known. You know what I'm saying? No, that's ill. Hi, I'm King Arthur, founder of Novel Views Tech, where we prepare children aged 10 to 17 for a future shaped by advanced technology. 
Our curriculum dives into fields like robotics, nanotechnology, quantum computing, and more. But what really brings learning to life are our bi-monthly, exploring the future of technology, webinars, hosted by industry experts. These webinars aren't just lectures, they're interactive discussions that connect your child to the pulse of the tech world, creating a learning experience that goes beyond the classroom. We offer a money-back guarantee to ensure you're completely satisfied. Equip your child with the skills to not just adapt, but to innovate and lead in the future. Join us at Novel Views. Tech and let's build their future, today. So my next my next question is, okay, how do you protect yourself, right? Is there a, a something to do before you submit where uh, you could copyright it first or when you do the distro and all that, that's that's the copyright timestamp? When you, when you time do your ASCAP and you're publishing, okay. you're good. But what's so beautiful about technology now is that whenever you save a session, it, it's time stamped and it's dated on that right. hard drive. So technically, whoever owns that hard drive has right. the ownership of that. Okay. So either way, you would be protected. A lot of people will like they trip and think people are going to steal and steal and steal. But that it's was me. Kind of, it's kind of impossible now. <laughs> it, it's, I was paranoid. It, it's it's seriously impossible now to the point where I might not even put something in my 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 ass cap and I'll still send it off to these publishers to see it if they'll put it in their libraries to see if they're going to register it because right. once they register it that's more money for me you know what i mean so you gotta right. and you have to trust yourself to know that you can make doper stuff mm -hmm. you can keep creating that, that's important too that that's hella important because i like i said i was a hoarder and and it, and not to um my shit was trash, I, and I say that, and and I'll be dead honest. <laughs> you know, when you make beats or you do some even rapping or whatever, like your first shit is always gonna be trash. I will never. There's probably nobody. There's probably like a handful of people that ever heard not on any of my early shit. I still got it though. Um, what was I? Place up, right? Huh? Nah, hell no. Um, Place up. <laughs> so what you're saying is because I didn't hear this before. Um, back then, so you're saying if you make something in Pro Tools and you got you got the source file for it. That's a copy. That's like a. That's, that's technically a, it's a it's like a poor man's copyright. Back in the day, what we would do or what you know managers used to tell me mm -hmm. was make the CD. You know what I mean, and send it to yourself. Mail it to yourself. Yeah. Because if you don't got the money for the notary and everything, it's a time state. It's time. It's it's stamped. But now right. we got a digital footprint with Pro Tools. We got a digital footprint. You know right, what I'm so. saying? So. so you're oh, good. That's, you know, I didn't know. I mean, that's that's that's, that's dope because I didn't know that. Even I even if you got, bounce I it even out. got a copyright signature on on my emails. That's like, hey, this music belongs to J. Josephine. Hey, do not, you know, send mm. out et cetera, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? Disclaimer. And it, it will still be legally binding. No, that's dope. That's no, that's dope. I was paranoid. So now nah, technology is beautiful in that way. Y'all going crazy on talk. <laughs> Y'all going crazy on the music talk. And, and my dad gave me everything but rhythm. You know what I mean? So I really <laughs> stay away from that one. <laughs> and so, like, uh, I want to talk about uh, your education. Like, you said you went to school for psychology, right? Then you went to Ohio, was it, for the, for yeah. the engineering? And mm -hmm. then the consistency, right? So talk about how important was your education in staying consistent in the whole music game? And then how has the education and consistency helped you get where you were? Well, to be honest with you, if I didn't have the will and want to learn, I wouldn't be where I'm at now. Because back then, like, you know, going to school, luckily I changed to a major that that I know that was my passion. You know what I mean? It was something I really wanted to get into with music. So once I did that, it was like, oh, I'm opening a world of opportunities because now if I know certain things, I won't get screwed over on my contracts. If I know certain things, you know, my music won't sound trash. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I can engineer and mix it the way that it needs to be mixed and not depend on somebody else and not even have to wait on anybody else. You know what I'm saying? So learning and education was kind of like a big platform for making it happen because even still I'm learning every day. You know what I mean? I get audio books to teach me more things about the field that I'm in all the time. So that, I don't have to outsource and I can keep it popping. I want to start my own publishing company. So 
You know what I'm saying? So I educate myself every single day still. So it's very important to me. I feel like if you don't go to college and they, there's something that's not for you, cool. But educate yourself, teach yourself something every day. There's no reason no, that you it, shouldn't because the internet is, like I said, it's infinite knowledge. So you sitting there not teaching yourself or going to YouTube University, you're missing mm -hmm. out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wasting time. Sure. Wasting time. Scrolling TikTok. Right. I mean, <laughs> you, could, you could literally spend 30 minutes a day teaching yourself something and it would be, I promise you, completely useful to your life. No, that's, that's, it. Right. that's true. That, that so is me, a bar. Frank, me and Frank, major tech is. We major tech is over here. So we, we, we in that vein, like we always looking at something new. We get too deep sometimes that we'll pick up something brand new and just drop everything else that we're working on and had to go back and pick it up, you know, and try to incorporate it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, with tech growing so fast, right, and AI taking over and making music, how you feel that's gonna mm. affect you your know what's so funny? Creation, right? And your artistry. What's up? All right, I got a great story about that. Um, so a company approached me, I'm not yeah, gonna boy. name them. They were like, uh, we got an opportunity for you. We need a female rapper to rap uh the song. So they was basically covering old songs. So I do like salt and pepper push it and like um uh, MC Light songs and Queen Latifah songs or whatever, whatever, right? And so I'm thinking, and it was for a video game, mm. right? And it was like, oh, we're going to get you 12 bands. You got to rap like 15 cover songs, uh, songs that I grew up with. I'm like, I can do this in, a, right. in an hour, <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. But this, so I had a Zoom call and they, they gave me the brief before. But when I had the Zoom call, they went into specifics and was like, Oh, yeah, because what we want you to do is to, to rap all these songs so we can use your vocals and your inflection so that people can type what they want to rap in and use your voice. And I was like, what? And I was like, do I get royalties <laughs> off, the, off the video game at least? And they're like, no, nah, this is it. I was like, so for $12,000. Well, yeah, no, nah, that's, that's way you crazy, want, crazy. You want my voice. My voice for you twelve. So you're talking about that. I was like, nah. And then, then probably in that was that country like for life, right? Even after you pass away, they perpetuity, had like perpetuity, perpetuity, yeah. perpetuity, perpetuity <laughs> throughout the universe, my mm -hmm. dude. For twelve G. <laughs> I was like, oh no! Nah. I was like, thank you so much. Um, no. But you I know what's like, crazy? The people that are doing it, that are that are saying yes to that and signing that away. Well, they like, don't think that they're worth more. That's the problem. That, that's crazy. Like you, exactly. Yeah, like, okay, let's say you're an aspiring artist and you make that deal. And then later on in your career, you blow up and you want to, you know what I'm saying, ex expand. You're screwed oh. because now you're the video game rapper. And not only voice. that, they own you, right? Don't they, they own your voice technically? No, nah, they don't own your voice. Okay. But, but the thing is. They can find ways they, to, to restrict they can you. They can literally make, if I wanted to come out with a song, after this whole situation, and if I want to come out with a song, they could come out with a remix using the computer, uh, uh, the AI that they have for that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's shit you can do about you. it. It's not, and it's nothing I can do about it. You feel me? That's horrible. So, so there is still a big fight in that sense, but I'm not worried because my job solidified. No robot could outwrap me. Like, and I mean. Uh -huh. And it's because this <laughs> robot has not lived a life and a, has a soul to Thanks. to relate to the, a human the way that I can. You know what I'm saying? That's real. But if you got to think, put it this way. Like, I think this was like a year ago, maybe six months ago. They were putting out songs by Drake. Not even by Drake. Drake AI. Oh, uh, yeah, Weekend baby. AI. Jay-Z. Yeah. And yeah. it sounded just like them. Absolutely. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and if... if to be honest, if you didn't tell them, if you didn't tell this person or whoever, if you didn't say it was fucking AI, you would believe you that it was the real person. Correct. Now, that that's gotta be kind of that's gotta be scary. You know well, what I'm saying? Well, that's the laws that we're working on now because the thing is, you can't say this is featuring Biggie and Biggie ain't do it, and the state come after you because the state's right, going to come after you. You feel yeah. me? It's fraud. So mm -hmm. legally, we still we still safe in that sense. 
You know what I mean? For the, mm-hmm. for the most part, because if you already a, established mu- musician where you have your publishing together, y'all, it's free. Go get it. <laughs> but if you get your publishing and stuff together, <laughs> you, don't, you, you really shouldn't have those type of worries and feel those type of threats. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I feel like we, we, we're in the stages of a gray area where like we, we can foresee issues and legalities and mm-hmm. how it can screw people. But it's like, you want to be positive about it and say, you know what, as powerful as AI is, there's nothing to worry about. And and I feel that too. But at the same time, it's like, you know, these corporations, if they're going to find, find a, a loophole, way. yeah, they're going to find a loophole. Yes, they're going <laughs> to, they're going to use AI to find a loophole around this shit. Right. You know, ask AI, hey, how do I get around this shit? Oh, you right. can do this. You know, yeah. so it's like they're gonna find some kind of way. But right now, it's really hard to falsify art. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to look at a a painting and and or if you know art or or listen to or a music if you know music, right? And say, oh, this artificial intelligence or this this what they just drew up is way more amazing than what this person put their heart into you know right. what i mean like the warmthness of it yeah like soul, yeah. it's certain things that an essence that i'm not afraid that uh, you know i mean like that makes me unafraid of them is I also, yeah i also think it's, it's important for the audience and for the consumers to to put their foot down and and say no, right? right? Like to prioritize the human art and and um the real human people over the AI. Cause because honestly, when the market, you know how they say when the market speaks or the market can show you what's real or not, if a lot of these consumers start taking this AI art, AI music, whatever, and they start purchasing it and utilizing it, then it's gonna be like, okay, well they're buying it. So I guess we're good to go. Now that's the problem is that we have to, we have to, as artists, trust in the consumers. Mm-hmm. Now, as artists, we have to trust the consumers to still feel. Right. And and that's probably the uh, the scary part for me. Right. Is because yeah. the consumers they have microwave brains, and the consumers are <laughs> you know what I mean like it's it's quick that's everything's nice. quick I want it quick I want it now I want this I want that right. so as if but as long as I can have those consumers that still feel, mm-hmm. I got a lane. You know what I'm saying? But that that would be my only fear. Issue, is, yeah. It wouldn't it, be it, the AI, it would be the consumers. Right. Like if you put give them a test, yeah. like give them two pieces of art and then see which one they pick or decide on, like a Turing test, so to speak, and then see see where the majority lean towards. Right. That could be like, yo, but, all these motherfuckers are choosing AI right now. Like, what are we gonna do? You know what I'm saying? But so yeah, like has the consumer ever been I'm a hip hop fan, right? Has the consumer ever been the smartest person, the most intelligent person? We Absolutely as not. individuals <laughs> and as a com- as a community, right? We've always been like we like the violent, the the vulgar, the salacious music, but deep down inside we know it's kind of destroying our community. But yet as a consumer base, we yet to move away from it. They keep feeding us the fucking bull crap and we're just eating it up eating it up and you know so but as long as we still have those uh, all right as long as you still have people that this is beautiful i could do it this way sexy red got a song with drake and SZA, right Mm -hmm. SZA's probably one of the more soulful artists Mm -hmm. of our time correct right and 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 Drake hasn't always been the lyrical, but one of the most lyrical people and successful rappers Decent. right now. Right. right. And you have Sexy Red on it. So what I'm... Who is a machine. What, who is a machine. But what I'm saying, I say that to say this. There can always still be room for improvement and if, if we know how to relate to each other. If there's still an artist inside of you, even if you're twerking, if there's an artist inside of you, that artist will still consume that art. That you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like that that little girl yeah. that that loved Whitney Houston and the little girl that loved um you know what I mean, like artists, artists of that Tony Braxton of that caliber at that mm-hmm. time. Right. Right. They they might be twerking now, but they're still 
an essence that they have. There's still something in them that's still, oh, now I'm listening to SZA now, or now I'm listening to Janae Aiko, or right. you know what I'm saying? Like, so you're going to have, it's okay to twerk and be ratchet, mm-hmm. but as long as the art is still there somewhere, you can, no, find, you're saying. Yeah, you, can, yeah. you can find fun in the art. It's okay. You know what I mean? That's true. That's true. And, and you, then it's an art and being so simple sometimes. I had to really figure that out as a lyricist. I was like, you know who taught me this? As a lyricist, I was like, I hate 2 chains. In the beginning, I was like, I hate 2 chains. I hate this nigga. I hate him. And excuse me. Uh, excuse my language. Titty boy. But I hated him. And then I started listening to him more and more and more. And I started understanding the genius in, in the simplicity mm-hmm. because it's hard to simplify yourself to that mat, you know I mean that matter and then still be catchy and still be influential mm-hmm. and still actually say something. Mm-hmm. He said, I wish a nigga right. would like a kitchen cabinet. Blew my mind. I was like, <laughs> 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 and, and this is coming from somebody that listens to Wu Tang and you know what I mean? Like Mm-hmm. that really listen to real yeah. like super hard lyricists jay-z is my favorite rapper mm-hmm. you know what i mean and but then mm-hmm. i still gotta appreciate those times where i could have fun or simplify myself and then w- once i started appreciating the art and simplicity mm-hmm. i was like oh, okay i could really write for tv now that's you dope. know what i mean right. that's dope it is now 2023 going on 2024 why don't you have a VPN? Only for a limited time, go to piavpn.com slash cyberbunny. You could get 83% off the PIA VPN. What is a VPN? VPN is basically software that's used to hide an end user information such as IP address, location, private data they may be transferring over the internet, identifiable information such as their devices they're using from being spied on, from hackers, governments, internet service providers, Anybody out there who wants to steal your data for their own personal gain. That's basically what a VPN does. If you want to take advantage of this discount, go to PIAVPN.com slash CyberBunny. Go there now. Sign up. Tell them I sent you. Get your software. Get it installed on your laptops, on your mobile phones, on your tablets, any device that connects to the internet. Get it installed on there. Get protected. Go now. That's real. I'm wondering, though, like, let's say back back to the... Um, to the AI thing, Let, let's say AI starts carving out its own share of the market and it's, it seems to be consuming shit, right? I feel like maybe that'll be a way for humans or, you know, real people to evolve the art music into something, into the next level and into perhaps something that AI can't emulate, you know what I'm saying, right away. Maybe this is part of the evolution of, of us. I don't know. The AI be spring. It is. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's hard. It's hard to <laughs> fathom right that is is taken over to to an extent and then we come up with something new but maybe that's what we need you know what i'm saying as as a human as a as a as an artist i there's always a com, a competitor inside you mm-hmm. to want to be the best and display the best you know what i'm saying so i feel like you wouldn't be a true artist if you didn't feel like you needed to compete or be the best or Right. Right. What AI, AI like, is yeah. like this motherfucking computer, bitch. This yeah. binary, bitch. And that's <laughs> how I, I, in my mind, that's where I'm at with it. You know what I'm saying? So. No, that's facts. That's I can see AI call somebody a fleshy body. In a district. <laughs> Imagine a rat beef between a real person and AI. Right. That'll be some shit. It's like, what yo, happened. It's AI gonna happen. whipping your ass. I'm telling you, it's going to happen one day. A freestyle, a freestyle battle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, so look, uh, I, we've been, you've been talking your ass off, and you've been sharing a lot of gems, dropping a lot of good stuff, and we ain't hold you up. I know you're about to go to Georgia. That shit can be fire. I wish I can go, but I ain't going nowhere. Um, oh, well, well. I you, do want to ask you to, what's up? I was about to say you could go to the event on the 28th uh, of February at NSU. Oh, okay. Ooh, that's at Norfolk State. We're doing an Afrofuturism <laughs> um, event, and it's by the art, it's like the whole director of art is there and putting together this event, basically for the students, for the community. You know what I'm saying? It's a free event. We're gonna, mm-hmm. uh, and Intellect's hosting. Uh, yeah, dope. Yep. DJ, DJ Dro is DJing. 
Um, we'll go. Um, poetry Jackson will be uh, spitting some poetry. Uh, we'll have Made in Norfolk being a vendor, and well, me and Poppy Joplin, uh, yeah, driver. Me, yeah, driver, me and, and me and Poppy Joplin will be performing, and that is the twenty eighth at NSU. So That's you dope. can make it there if you can't make it to GA. Hell yeah, it. we gotta get these flyers. And also, if you can real quick, um, talk about the March thirtieth event, or if they got a website, uh, we're gonna post that in the description with the links. Uh, that that's um yeah. sync spotlight that's um on instagram is sync spotlight on facebook is sync spotlight you can also follow um matthew steel still uh being spelled s-t-e-e-l-e -E -E. on instagram he's the owner um of steel sync and throwing the event um they're still looking for actually nope then there's no more vendors all the vip mm. tickets are sold out the early bird tickets was today Today is 19th. Yeah, the early bird tickets are gone. Um, so we only got general admission right now that's left. Um, but right. and that's in Georgia. It's in Georgia. It's a full day event. You'll actually get to um meet and touch hands. If oh well, not maybe not touch hands, but you'll be able to display your music and oh, talk, to, talk to the <laughs> to actual music supervisors, you you mean other producers and artists, um, people that are actually in the business where like they own these publishing companies and look at they, you know, they own these libraries that are looking for music. That's dope. So it's just a, you know, that's another way like a, to get in, you know what I mean? Oh, Going yeah. to these sync conferences, right. getting the knowledge and meeting the people. Yeah. Networking is hella important. Right. No, that's facts. For sure. Um, I'm trying to get Frank outside. He playing. I'll be <laughs> outside, man. I, I was at, I mean, I don't know if you count yesterday as outside. I was in Richmond. That no, was, no. He was entertaining okay, 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 that doesn't count. But anyway, um, <laughs> so before we go, uh, what is something that you're trying to yeah, figure out right now? Like in your life, something yeah. that you're working on trying to figure out? Moving forward. Oh, um, well, right now, I, I'm kind of in the process of, under, since I understand the business that I'm in, I want to start my own label. Um, because Virginia has so much talent and everybody always say, oh, Virginia got so much talent and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I actually mean that. And, and what I want to do is actually offer these opportunities to the people that are around. Um, I'm not, you know, you got to have all, you have all these people that have, you got to pay for submissions and all this mm, other. I, I want to just, I want to educate and put people directly to the source. So, um, I want to, you know, start my own publishing company where, you know, I'm pitching my own music. I'm trying to figure that out. I, I'm like, I'm doing consultations for sync. I, I think I figured that out, but now I'm speaking more and you know what I'm saying? So, That's but, dope. so, but yeah, I think the next step is starting my own company and cutting out the middleman. Yeah, you know, that's, that should be a bar right there. That should be the logo. Hey man, the I might, cut that might middleman. cut out the middleman. <laughs> no, that's, that's a bar. Um, yeah. And then last thing, right. very, very last thing, what are your socials and your website so people want to look you up, get in contact with you about anything, let people know where to find you? I'm simple. It's uh, jjosephine.com. Uh, how it sounds is how it's spelled. <laughs> um, if you Google me, all of the pop up, though, it is um, jjosephine.com, jjosephine on IG, Jade Jose on X now, not Twitter, it's X. Mm -hmm. And um, J. Josephine everywhere on Spotify, right. Apple, Title, J. Josephine. No, that's dope. All right. Well, no, this is a hell of, Yo, yeah. I'm inspired. I tell you, I'm about to bust this keyboard yeah. out. Hey, hey send me hey, some this, beats. This, this, shit, my way, bro. this shit happens to me all the time. Every time we talk to a music head, I'm just like, damn, this 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 is like my old life. I had to be but... sitting back. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, hopefully people get these nuggets. They they check you out at the NSU event. Yeah, she dropped it. And the event in Georgia is super dope. Thank you so much for, for meeting us. Um, of course. You got, thank you, you so much for today. having me. Of course. Thank you for having me. We go way, way back like, what did they say? Two flats or the Cadillac yeah. or shit like that. Hey now. Hey now. I, I got you. I got you. Anytime, yo. I'll come back when I'm making more money. Yeah. Hey, no, that works. That That's I works. love you. I love you. Yeah, yeah. By the time, we're going to be richer too, so it's all right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to be in the same room next Tech time. Moves. There you go. Word yeah. up. No, that That's works. Fine. Thank you so much. We'll see you. Have a good night. And uh, episode sure. 72, that's a wrap. 72. Appreciate you guys. Peace. peace. Yeah. All right. Peace out.